Hello and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Teacher Talks Second Grade and this is another Who Would Win book. This is Whale vs. Giant Squid. This is a book by Jerry Pilata and illustrated by Rob Bolster. It is distributed and published by Scholastic. If you are familiar with these books, these are an awesome way to make nonfiction come to life. Excellent job, Jerry Pilata and Rob Bolster. As far as the reading level goes, this book is a level Q. If you know my channel, all of my books are leveled, and I will tell you what grade they come at as far as levels go. So level Q on the GRL, that's the guided reading level. Level Q puts this book at a third grade level. It actually puts it kind of at the end of third grade level. So be careful. This one's pretty challenging. I say be careful because I'm a second grade teacher, and if you're a second grader out there, you need to make sure that you are a very, very strong reader if in fact you are going to purchase and read this book. So I am going to show you every single page in this book. We are going to read the last two pages together and we will see who wins this battle. Whale versus giant squid. Hey, take a moment right now, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a ton and it will help support me to get more and more of these books so I can show them to you. So please hit subscribe. It doesn't do anything bad for you, and it only helps me out a whole bunch. I'd love it if you hit that like button as well. All right, friends, let's dive right in. So if you're familiar with these books, you'll know that they will start off by giving us all kinds of background information. It will even give us the scientific name for these guys. However, I am not going to read that to you. All kinds of big facts, colorful facts, runner-up facts. There's a giant squid. And of course, the giant squid's scientific name, which again, I'm going to take a pass on. You can do your best to sound it out. Facts, bonus facts, giant facts, all kinds of different awesome information on these guys. Talking about mammals versus mollusks. Comparing the eyes. Oh man, look at the size of that eyeball. Looks like it's about the size of a basketball. Discussing the different teeth. Actually, I should say teeth versus a beak. Very cool. The tail versus the fin. Discussing how these um, creatures, especially that whale, right? That, especially the sperm whale, that giant whale, was used a long time ago for its oil that they would use to burn to create light and cook food. And look at this, there'd be cash rewards. One million dollars reward. Talking about what these creatures eat. Their speed. And how far deep in the ocean they can go and how far deep they typically live. Some more awesome, interesting facts and discussing how the whale uses echolocation, which is kind of like a sonar type thing, and how that, um, how the giant squid uses this ink as one of its strategies. Talking about how these whales have been used and kind of famous whales to be used in books and in movies, and again, that giant squid in its Famous legend in these books and movies, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. All right, friends, we're getting to the fight. I am going to read these last two pages to you. Hope you're building your evidence. Who's going to win this battle? All right, there's our whale. The whale dives. It looks for food. It sends out sound waves, hoping to find a tasty meal. It senses a few small fish. The whale is hungry. It is looking for a nice giant calamari dinner. A giant squid is in deep water and out of range. 
The giant squid decides to move to shallower water, an easier place to find food. Most fish and squid live in water less than 200 feet deep. Here's our squid. The whale senses the giant squid a quarter mile deep. It dives deeper. The giant squid doesn't notice the whale right away. The whale clicks a few sounds, locates the giant squid, then attacks with its mouth open. The whale grabs a small piece of one of the squid's arms. The giant squid blows ink in the whale's face, then darts away. The whale swims after the giant squid. The squid sees the whale and decides to attack first. The squid realizes it's in for a fight. It puts all its legs and feeder arms on the whale. Suction cups and hooks scrape the whale's skin. The squid tries to hold the whale down until the whale runs out of air. Its plan doesn't work. The whale maneuvers and bites a chunk of the squid and a few of the squid's arms. A few more bites and the giant squid is in deep trouble. The whale thinks the giant squid is delicious. Ah. The whale wins but has a sucker and a scratch marks all over its head. That fight hurt. So who won? The whale won. Awesome, awesome book. All right, friends, if you know at the very last page, they have this checklist. My suggestion is for these books, all of them in this series have this checklist at the end. What I ask my students to do is tape these last two pages together, build their evidence, they can decide who has the advantage of these different areas and then make their prediction on who's going to win the battle. Once they make their prediction and write about it, they can then open it up, read the last pages to see who in fact won that battle. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, if you haven't hit like yet, now's your chance. Please help me out and do that so we can do more of these books together. Subscribe, hit the playlist, and you'll see the rest of these Who Would Win books. Enjoy.